So we've just taken a little look at the electromagnetic spectrum. I want to kind of just wrap that part up a little bit. I want you to think about the electromagnetic spectrum and, and, and more specifically um, visible light spectrum. So your, your, your colors of the rainbow. You see a rainbow. Okay. There's your rainbow. What colors on the top? What colors on the top of the rainbow? What colors in the bottom? Does it change? Is there a difference when you get a double rainbow? A spherical rainbow? Obviously we've got half rainbows, we don't quite see all the colors, but there's an actual scientific chemistry reason why there's going to be a specific color on the top versus on the bottom. All right. The same thing with if you have a prism and you have light coming in through a prism and it separates, right? Because as light comes in through a prism, it gets broken up into its components, the visible light spectrum, the Roy G. Biv. Which color is on the top versus the bottom? And think to yourself, you know, have I ever, you know, I, I enjoy rainbows, I look at them, have I really ever thought about it? I enjoy prisms, I've seen pictures of them, have I really thought about it? I know when I think about prisms or rainbows or whatnot, I always think scientifically, but they also are beautiful, but um, here's a good example of a prism and why so this is off of Wikipedia, I appreciate Wikipedia, but um, you can see it does a really good job of showing what's happening. In a, on a prism, you're always going to have the red, uh, I could probably draw this, the red on the top and the violet on the bottom. Roy G. Biv. And the reason that is, is because red have a longer wavelength. Since they have a longer wavelength, notice how they're cutting through versus the separation, more bending due to the violet. So reds have a longer wavelength versus violet. And so violet, as it's going through that prism, that's going through the glass, it's getting bent more. Now they're traveling at the same speed. Hopefully you can see that, you know, if you're thinking about it, it's coming out of here at the same time, because it's going through the prism, the speed of light is constant, but the wavelengths are different, so they, they bend a little bit. That's exactly what happens on a rainbow as well. All right. Now, I know that a lot of you are looking at that prism picture here, and you're immediately thinking, something else. You're probably thinking Pink Floyd, right? And the Dark Side of the Moon. Dark Side of the Moon album. to keep going but again you can kind of see here on my draw on my prism we've got the red on top the violet on the bottom and again it's because the red does not bend as much as the violet does due to the fact that it's got a shorter excuse me a longer wavelength all right might as well listen to this a little bit more
and obviously we could go a lot further with that but we we won't for obvious reasons we'll get back to our slide all right so there's that um, I do want to mention this I mean I'm a big um, Pink Floyd fan but um, if you've never seen this this is pretty cool too they call it the dark side of Oz somebody who knows when who knows why whatever but basically um, it says that if you play the Dark Side of the Moon album, the yeah, album in its entirety, um, while the Wizard of Oz is playing the movie, you turn down the, the audio on the Wizard of Oz movie and play the Dark Side of the Moon, then a whole bunch of similarity, like it just looks like it syncs up. So, you know, you can see here, it tells you how to set up when to press play, but you know, in Breed it says balanced on the biggest wave as Dor Dorothy's balancing on the fence. Um, as on the run starts, Dorothy falls. Um, you hear thunder at the end of the song and then could there be a storm coming? Um, when money starts, it's pretty kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, I don't know. There's just a bunch of, I, apparently, pretty cool syncing up with um, um, with uh, the Wizard of Oz so I'm a big Pink Floyd fan I'm also a Wizard of Oz fan I think it's pretty cool so where were we there's your rainbow Lastly, I just want to let's talk again about the electromagnetic spectrum because you do. I do want you to remember it. We've got our Roy G. Biv, which is our visible light spectrum. Near violet, of course. This is the longer wavelengths. So, longer wavelength, shorter wave. Wait, I put frequency on the first one longer wavelength, shorter wavelength. Near this is UV, near ultraviolet, I know ultraviolet's right near violet. Near ultraviolet is X-rays, because again, now I'm saying ultraviolet, you think about the sun and it might be harmful. X-rays we know are pretty dangerous. And then gamma waves are even more dangerous for you. Again, short, uh, long wavelength, versus short wavelength, these are short wavelengths. Since they're short wavelengths, they have a high frequency, which means they have a high energy. On the other end, infrared, right near infrared, infrared deals with heat oftentimes, infrared, deal, infrared waves, you can use infrared goggles, you see heat of the body. Micro waves, makes sense, heat. TV, to me a TV looks like a microwave, and radio that's kind of how i remember these and these are very very long wavelengths versus over here very short wavelengths